Hi, I'm Emily. Before I dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales like this one. So let's get into it. Living as an architect in my late 20s, I'd just wrapped up what felt like the biggest achievement of my life. I'd bought my own house. Not just any house, but a quaint, sun-drenched bungalow perched on the outskirts of town. It was a dream crafted from years of sketches and sleepless nights. Last Sunday, I invited my dad, Jack, and my stepmom, Linda, over for brunch to show them the place. Despite our rocky history, it was important for me to share this moment. As I watched their car pull up, I remember feeling a mix of excitement and nerves. Emily, this place is gorgeous, Linda exclaimed as they stepped inside, her eyes wide as they swept over the open living space. Jack gave a low whistle, his gaze taking in the exposed brickwork I'd fought so hard to include in the design. You've done well for yourself, kid. Their praises warmed me, but there was a tension in the air, palpable and thick. Over brunch, the conversation naturally drifted towards their lives. Their recent struggles with money seemed to dominate the discussion, casting a slight shadow over the celebratory meal. I caught them exchanging glances when they thought I wasn't looking, their expressions a mix of pride and something else. Envy, maybe? Desperation? Changing the topic, I talked about the little community garden I'd joined, trying to steer us back to lighter waters. That sounds lovely, dear, Linda smiled, though it didn't quite reach her eyes. You always were one to put down roots, Jack joked, but there was an edge to his voice that made me uneasy. As we cleared the plates, my phone buzzed. It was Nora, my childhood friend and now a bank teller, texting me to congratulate me again on the house. I smiled replying quickly. Little did I know how crucial Nora's role would soon become in the unraveling of my parents' deceit. After Jack and Linda left, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. They had seemed genuinely happy for me, yet there was an undercurrent of something I couldn't quite place. It wasn't until later that week that the pieces started to fall into place. While sifting through my mail, I found an envelope with Jack's name on it but my address— Curious, I opened it, my heart sinking as I read the contents. It was a notice from a bank about a mortgage. But not just any mortgage, a remortgage on my new house. Panic setting in, I called Nora immediately. Hey, I just got something really weird in the mail. Can you check something for me at work tomorrow? It's about my house's mortgage. Of course, Em. I'll look into it first thing, she assured me, her tone serious. I spent a restless night, tossing and turning the betrayal already souring in my stomach. How could they? Why would they? The questions swirled in my head, unanswered. The next day, Nora's call came mid-morning. Emily, you need to come to the bank. There's something you need to see. Arriving at the bank, the reality of the situation hit me hard. Nora led me to her office and showed me the mortgage papers. My signature, forged, clear as day. Your dad and Linda came in last week. I thought it was strange, but I didn't realize. Her voice trailed off as she handed me the surveillance footage time-stamped from last week. There they were, Jack and Linda, standing at a counter, signing papers, looking nervously around. The betrayal stung, deep and fierce. I felt the foundations of my family, shaky as they were, crumble in that moment. I'm so sorry, Emily, Nora whispered, her hand reaching out to squeeze mine. Anger. Hurt, betrayal. It was all there, boiling over, but beneath it all, a steely resolve formed. They might have forged my signature, but they wouldn't take my home, my dreams. Not without a fight. I had just finished a long day of consultations when I found a misplaced letter in my stack of mail. All addressed to me, except for one. This one had my dad, Jack's name on it, but my home address. Curiosity peaked. I slit the envelope open. It was from the bank regarding paperwork on a mortgage. My mortgage? Remortgaged. My heart sank, hands trembling as I read the details of changes I never authorized. Still reeling from the shock, I dialed Nora's number. She picked up on the second ring, her voice a soothing balm to my frayed nerves. Hey, Nora, it's Emily. Can we talk about something work-related? It's about my house's mortgage. Sure, Em. What's up? Nora responded her tone shifting to professional curiosity. I hesitated, then plunged ahead. I received a notice about a remortgage, 
but I didn't initiate any changes. Could you check who authorized this? Nora was silent for a moment, then answered. I'll have a look and get back to you. Hang tight, okay? Thanks, I'll be waiting. The next day, Nora confirmed my worst fears. Emily, the remortgage was authorized by a signature, yours supposedly last Thursday. But Emily, I know your signature, and this looked off. I felt a chill run down my spine. Can you hold on to those papers? I need to see them. Already pulled them aside for you, she said. Armed with the knowledge of betrayal, I drove to my parents' house. The evening air did little to cool my simmering anger as I knocked on their door. Linda opened the door, her smile faltering when she saw my expression. Emily? What's wrong? Where's Dad? I asked, my voice steady despite the storm inside. Jack soon joined us in the living room, his greeting casual. Em, what brings you here so late? I didn't beat around the bush. Did you two take out a remortgage on my house? My tone was hard, eyes searching theirs for any sign of guilt. They exchanged a quick, nervous glance, which they couldn't mask quickly enough. What? That's ridiculous, Emily, Jack stuttered, his attempt at feigned ignorance clumsy. Linda chimed in, her voice a little too calm. Honey, why would we do that? There must be some mistake. But the flicker of panic had already betrayed them. There's no mistake. I've seen the paperwork, signed with a fake signature. My signature. Jack's eyes hardened as he met my gaze, the facade crumbling. We meant to talk to you about it, Emily. We're in a bind financially, and we thought... You thought you'd commit fraud under my own roof? I cut him off, my voice rising with each word. Linda reached out, her usual poise slipping. Emily, we just needed a little help to get back on our feet. We were going to sort it all out before you even... I trusted you, I said the hurt slicing through the anger. You were my family. The room fell silent, the tension thick. It was clear now. Their desperation had pushed them to betrayal. I left their house with a heavy heart, the ties that bound us fraying with every step. They had made their choice, and now I had to make mine. As I drove away, the path forward was clear but fraught with heartache. They had left me no choice but to fight back, not just for my house, but for my integrity. The betrayal was a bitter pill, one that hardened my resolve rather than breaking my spirit. It wasn't enough to know the truth. I needed undeniable proof to prevent them from wriggling out of the consequences. I turned to the only person I trusted completely in this tangled mess, Nora. Nora, we need to prove they did this. Can we access any surveillance footage from that day? I asked my voice a mix of anger and determination. I thought you might ask. I'm on it, Em. I'll say it's part of a routine audit. That way no one gets suspicious, Nora replied, her tone as serious as I'd ever heard it. With Nora's help, we accessed the bank's surveillance tapes. The grainy footage was less than ideal, the figures barely recognizable. But I wasn't deterred. Over the next few days, I applied every bit of my technical know-how, enhancing the video frame by frame. Slowly, the figures became clearer, the familiar profiles of Jack and Linda, unmistakable as they leaned over the counter, signing the documents. The moment of realization was sharp, the betrayal deepening with the clarity of the image. I had them, caught in the act, their deceit laid bare for any to see. But something within me shifted. Confronting them directly seemed too simple, too quick. They deserved more than just a confrontation. They deserved to face the full weight of their actions. I ensured the evidence was rock solid, indisputable. There would be no room for excuses or manipulation. This proof was my shield, my weapon against further betrayal. With the files secured and backed up, I planned the next steps. As the dust settled on my meticulous gathering of proof, fate seemed to weave its own tale of justice. Jack and Linda, blinded by greed, ventured into another financial escapade. This time they fell prey to a fraudulent investment scheme that promised high returns. Desperate to maintain their newfound lifestyle, they poured every cent of their ill-gotten funds into the venture. Within weeks, the scheme crumbled, and with it, their financial security vanished into thin air. 
their public exposure was swift and brutal. Friends and acquaintances, once cordial and supportive, turned their backs, disgusted by the deceit that had come to light. The community I had once feared would judge me instead rallied around me, their support a balm to the wounds inflicted by my own family. Meanwhile, Nora and I worked diligently to untangle the web of fraud that had ensnared my home. With her expertise and my unwavering resolve, we traced every falsified document, every unauthorized transaction. Together, we presented our findings to the bank, which acted swiftly to rectify the situation. The fraudulent mortgage was nullified, and my ownership was legally reaffirmed. With the legal matters settled, I made the difficult decision to cut ties completely with Jack and Linda. The betrayal was too deep, the trust irreparably broken. Instead, I poured my energy into my career and nurtured my relationships with those who had stood by me. Like Nora, whose loyalty had been my guiding light through the darkest times. In the quiet moments, I often found myself reflecting on the ordeal. Trust, I had learned, was not a commodity to be given freely, but a precious gift to be earned and cherished. The ordeal had taught me the strength of self-reliance, the power of standing firm in one's convictions. As I looked out over the city from the rooftop of my newly secured home, I felt a profound sense of peace. The skyline stretched wide and far, a testament to the resilience of structures both physical and personal. I had risen above the toxicity that sought to undermine me, and in doing so, I had not only secured my own future, but had also reclaimed my peace of mind. Life, like architecture, is about foundations. The strength of those foundations doesn't just lie in the materials used, but in the integrity of their construction. And as I stood there, a gentle breeze stirring the air, I knew that my foundations were stronger than ever. Now that we've reached the end of Emily's journey, I have a question that might stir some thoughts. Do you believe cutting ties with family, regardless of their actions, is justified if it means protecting your own well-being and future? Emily made her choice, but what would you have done in her shoes? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts and experiences, so please share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more compelling tales. Your support helps us keep these stories coming.